Today's video is about this device, the lowly incandescent light bulb that was so common 20, 30, 40 years ago, and of course has now been completely replaced by, well, first compact fluorescence and now LED bulbs. But for this application, none of those will do. The old bulb is better. And what it is, is we can use a bulb like this as a very effective protection device for a radio or TV or some, some other piece of electrical equipment under test. So this is the circuit diagram, and it's really very simple. We start off on the left with a standard plug or cord with a plug on it. And of course, if you're in a non-120 volt country, you should substitute your own plug. And then we have a switch and also a power indicator to let us know the thing is energized when the switch is closed. And what I've used is a combined switch and indicator device that fits in a standard North American outlet. And then the most important part of the whole thing is the incandescent light bulb. I've used a standard socket like this. There are plenty of other sockets that you could use. The nice thing about a socket like this is it holds the bulb up and when it's mounted on a junction box um, really provides a base. And then finally at the other end a socket or in this case a pair of sockets. And so what happens is when you turn the power on any power that gets to the socket on the live wire up here has to go through the filament of the light bulb. What I haven't shown is, of course, down below here, we also have a ground wire essentially going from the plug to the grounds on the socket. Now, that's all very well, but why wouldn't you just use a fuse? Well, the filament of an old incandescent light bulb is actually quite nonlinear. And if this were a 100 watt bulb, and this is actually a 200 watt one, but if it was a 100 watt bulb, the filament for 100 watts at 120 volts should be about a 145 ohms, give or take. Well, it turns out that if we measure the filament of a 100 watt bulb when it is cool and turned off, it can be really low, maybe as low as 10 or 15 or 20 ohms. And that's because for most metals, most good conductors, when you heat them up or their temperature increases, their resistance goes up. So you can sort of imagine a light bulb that is so hot that the filament is glowing white hot, it's gonna have a much higher resistance than when the filament is cool. And we can use that to our advantage because when virtually no current is flowing or a current that's much less than the rated current of a light bulb, the resistance of the filament is very close to zero. If, however, there were to be a short across here and as much current as possible could flow through the bulb, well, this resistance ramps up quite rapidly. What that means is is that it really behaves a bit like a rather crude constant current source. So if we plug an old radio into the plug like this, what should happen is initially the radio probably is going to draw only a little current and then more and more as the tubes heat up. And what the light bulb will do is make sure that if there is some defective part in the radio, perhaps a shorted transformer or a electrolytic capacitor that has really gone bad over the years. What this will do is prevent a large current, maybe 10 amps or more, 20 amps, 30 amps going in and really damaging the radio. It also makes it easier to troubleshoot because if you do have some current flowing, you can probe it with a meter and figure out what part of it is shorting. So that having been said, let's actually try it. 
So, I have this wonderful old Luva Opta Magnate vintage German radio that has FM bands, shortwave bands, and the broadcaster AM band. And one of the really neat features is that it has all the cities in Europe marked on it and where their particular AM radio stations are. So you can imagine in the 50s or 60s with this radio, you could move your tuning indicator to the correct position here. And maybe if it was here, you would hear the radio station from Strasbourg. Sadly, these days, most of those things would have changed, but it was rather a cool thing, and I remember a lot of European radios had that. I guess it was maybe more interesting because there were all the countries in close proximity, as opposed to North America, where there's really only three countries, um, Canada, United States, and Mexico. Anyway, that having been said, what I'm going to do is plug the radio into our device, and I've set it up with a 100 watt bulb and I'm going to plug the device into 120 volt power actually into a GFCI outlet and well all we need to do now is turn it on and you could see the light bulb came on quite bright probably as all the tube filaments in the radio were cold and now we have to wait a little bit for the radio to get going, all the tubes to come up to proper temperature, and as they do, they'll start drawing current from the DC supply, and we can actually see that happening now because the light bulb is lighting up again as DC current is being drawn. We can also see there is a little lamp here, and it's working, and I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there is some noise coming out of the radio, probably more of a hum than anything else. And it turns out with this 100 watt bulb, that's pretty much all we're going to get. And I suspect what's happening is we're losing enough voltage across the light bulb that it's really not enough to get the tubes properly energized and just for fun let's see what type of voltage we're getting on the AC line and here you go we're getting about 91 volts or so which I guess is not quite enough for this radio so what we need to do is give it a little bit more juice we'll turn it off we'll change the 100 watt bulb to a 200 watt bulb, the one that I was using with the circuit diagram. And this should give it enough juice to actually work. So we'll turn it on. You can see now that the filament in the 200 watt bulb isn't glowing. It might barely start to glow, but now we can hear the radio. And the filament is glowing, and let's just adjust that. I'm just going to go around the other side. Well, it's certainly getting something. Maybe I spoke too soon. Jonathan. There we go. It's working. The controls are a little bit noisy and need to be cleaned. But it is a beautifully working 1950s, early 60s radio. And we were able to fire it up with the safety of an incandescent bulb protecting it 
from overcurrent if some old component was shorted or otherwise defective. The other thing that it can be really useful for is a lot of these old radios have electrolytic capacitors that over the years have gone bad and it turns out you can fix many of them just by gradually passing a voltage and current through them which will reform the non-conductive oxide layer on the plates of the electrolytic capacitor. And a good way to do that without damaging anything is to use a incandescent bulb to limit the current. So there you go. Unlike most of the other safety and testing devices I've shown you, this device is intended to protect the equipment. It won't do any protection for a human, and that's why I said I plugged it into a GFCI outlet, which one should always consider doing, that or an isolation transformer. So there you go. That's my incandescent light bulb test device. And we'll probably do another video at some point about this wonderful old German radio. See you next time.